Electromagnetic levitation is a lot simpler than it sounds. All it takes is a strong magnet or electromagnet. For example, from a speaker or a motor magnet or something. And something to actually levitate, like a piece of aluminum or copper. Um, just as long as it's highly conductive and not actually pulled to the magnet like steel. Now, steel is still repelled, it's just attracted a lot stronger than it's repelled. But anyway, we will set a piece of aluminum on top there. And this electromagnet runs off of 250 volts at uh, 25 to 30 amps. Uh, it used to be a large transformer, as you can see over there. This put out a lot of power. Um, anyway, we will uh, turn it on and see what happens. Try a different piece of aluminum. No tricks. There's no string, no nothing. It takes a considerable amount of force to push it down. It actually gets really warm in the magnetic field, too. This is a uh, molten piece of aluminum. And, oh wow, it really takes really slow. Okay. I'll set it on top. And uh, maybe this will work a little better. And that's not because the transformer twitches when I turn it on. It's, well, it's not bolted down either, but it, that's just not why. <laughs> so, uh, another demonstration of what's going on uh, can be with uh, a bunch of aluminum wire, or you can use copper wire, but hey, aluminum's cheap. Um, and preferably something to uh, pull the magnetic field farther away from the transformer, so it's a little more effective uh, for that. I'm just using this for the uh, metal core. Right now it doesn't do much, but whenever you short it out like that, it repels. So what's going on is inside the block of aluminum, uh, for example, if this is a vertical view, you have the uh, aluminum here. And inside the aluminum, you're generating something called eddy currents. So the transformer core would look something like that. And uh, here's the other side of it. So something like that. As you can see, there's three sections. Uh, these are called E's, and I's go on top of it to make a uh, complete, uh, I would say circuit, but electromagnetic circuit. <laughs> so anyway, the piece of aluminum that is sitting on top of it, like this, will uh, basically act like a transformer. Um, so inside here, you will have a magnetic and electrical field, and uh, just going right around like that. Really simple. And uh, if it's shorted out, for example, if it's like this, or if a, a coil like this is shorted out, then it will draw a bunch of current. But if it's not shorted out, uh, whenever it's disconnected, then it'll just sit there and not do anything. Another really cool thing you can do is take a nail, if you can get it to stand up. Okay. And a hard drive platter. And 
gonna have two. All right, you can set a hard drive platter on a nail, and as long as you drop it twice, then it'll work. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Cool, huh? And uh, it's warmed up to like 120 degrees by now. Okay, I have another one that has been cut uh, with tin snips. And uh, we'll see what happens with this one. Uh, this is just like the open circuit of this coil here. Not much. Hardly anything. So if you spread it apart a little more, then uh, uh, won't do much. So. Um, you can do this with literally any electromagnet, um, like a transformer this big. You can set a uh, hard drive platter right on top, and it'll probably at least jitter around if you turn it on. Okay. I haven't tried this yet. Uh, I at least heard it move. So again, this is just a simple demonstration of electromagnetism and eddy currents, which are the electrical fields induced by the magnetic field. Now, normally, if you set a piece of aluminum on top of a magnet like that, it won't do anything. The reason that it levitates is because the magnetic field switches from north to south, um, just back and forth because of AC, which is the kind of power that goes into it. So positive and negative switch 60 times per second, which means that the magnetic field switches 60 times per second. If I were to sit this on a stationary magnet, then it wouldn't really do anything. Now if I were to drop it, it would drop slower than dropping it elsewhere. Now, I don't have a strong enough magnet or equipment to actually see the difference, but if you have a really strong magnet, and a superconducting piece of aluminum, or just one big piece of aluminum, then you can actually see it slowly fall down. It's really cool to watch. Um, so another thing that we can do, ooh, oh, that's, <laughs> that heated up. Um, you remember how I said that even iron and steel can have eddy currents, um, despite the strength being pulled to the magnet? Well, that's what heated up this nail, and that's heated up everything else. And oh, it's extremely hot. 150 plus. <laughs> um, but you can uh, use inductive heating uh, to industrially melt uh, parts or uh, something to be formed. Another thing that you can do, this isn't really directly related to uh, eddy currents, which is really cool, is uh, draw an arc off the top of the electromagnet. I'm going to get it focused. Um, this arc will be approximately 50,000 watts, 30,000 volts, several amps, and it'll be right on top of the electromagnet. Uh, I bad wire, so yeah. I'm standing back. It's pretty annoying. Fireworks. So whenever you draw an arc off of an electromagnet, um, the plasma created from the arc can actually be attracted to the magnet. I'm just going to draw an arc without the electromagnet first. And Okay, 
it, so it's a bunch of power, but if you put it through an electromagnet, and a wire fall out one second. Third time's a charm, right? Apparently not. First time's a charm. There we go. Maybe this is turn that for you. 